Here we go. Is the mic on? Episode 107. What's wrong with Orny Adams? I am running on pure adrenaline today. I had a wonderful weekend. I was at a Teen Wolf convention in Chicago. Ah, do you know what it's like to meet a thousand people in a day? I'll tell you in a few minutes. I'm, I, I had a complete adrenaline dump. I'll explain what that is. But more importantly, how can this still be going on in this day and age? The amount of waste, corporate waste and corporate stupid decisions drive me nuts. And I deal with it all day. This is why I'd hate to own a corporation because I, I, I couldn't handle having stupid employees. And I'd just like to say, Bic Lighters, what is this all about? I'm about to show you, if you're watching the video, uh, an immense amount of uh, cardboard and, and paper. Okay, I ordered from Bic Lighters. You know these things? I'm going to show the camera. They're multi-purpose. Uh, they're long like lighters. You use them to light candles. And I have an electric uh, or gas fireplace. I, I, I light this with that. And so... They break. In fact, I've never refilled one. Has anybody ever refilled one of these refillable crappy plastic lighters? They always break first. They break before you have a chance to refill them. The, the life of the gas inside of them is longer than the actual product itself. But so I, I don't care. They're so cheap. You get four of them for $12.99. I bought this on Amazon. Okay. Well, guess what happened? One of the four didn't work. Is that shocking to anybody? Is it shocking that a product doesn't work? 25% of the product that arrived didn't work, which is actually, as far as I'm concerned, a success in this day and age. So I, via Amazon messaging, wrote Bic, uh, you know, I sent them a letter. Hey, a note. Hey, listen, I uh, got the product and one of the uh, lighters isn't working. Could you just replace it? Figure it's going to take two minutes and, and I'll get the lighter. I'll feel good because I, I'm tired of feeling ripped off by corporations. I'm tired of getting home from takeout orders and noticing something's wrong. I'm tired of being overcharged. I'm tired of staying in hotels, leaving the hotel and getting home uh, a week later and finding out they charged me from some snack in the room that I never ate because the cleaning person was probably hungry. So they just dove in and ate something. So I, I like to fight this stuff. In fact, I think it's our civic duty to fight this stuff because then it prevents it from happening. So these four lighters arrived in this box in this huge envelope, okay? One of them didn't work. So they said, we're going to send you a, a box to send back the four lighters. And then 10 to 12 late, uh, days later, you'll receive another box with the new lighters in it. And I said, well, this is crazy because only one isn't working. Uh, I don't want you to throw out the other three. Let me just keep the three. Send me a new one. And they sent the same form letter again. Sorry to hear about this. We're going to send you a new box. Blah, 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 blah. I said, please don't. Well, guess what arrived in the mail? Another big envelope like this. And inside of it, a box. Uh, look at this. <laughs> they want me to put... The, and his instructions. Look at the waste of paper, a waste of this, a waste of a Ziploc bag. I mean, this is insanity. It's insanity. I'm telling you, if I was running Bic lighters, I'd go nuts. I'd go nuts. If I knew my employees were resolving issues like this, I gave you a simple solution. How about this? Refund me. 25% of the $12.99. For $12.99, they've now sent out two boxes, two envelopes, the, the return shipping. Hold on a second. What's his name, Kev? Hold on. Hold on. It costs them $6.15 to send the initial Bic lighter. And then the return box is probably another $6.15. Okay, shipping has already exceeded the cost of the products of what I paid for. Do you understand, Bic Lighters, how stupid this business decision is? I haven't slept in four nights and I know better. Shame on corporations for wasting. I'm fired up. Oh. Oh. I stayed in a hotel in Atlanta and I got in. I'm starting to think, I'm starting to think that 
these hotel rooms are even less clean than I believe them to be in the first place. I think when I was staying in Michigan in one hotel, they didn't even change the sheets. I'm starting to suspect that sheets aren't being changed. I mean, I guess if somebody stayed for one night and you looked at the sheets, you were a cleaning person, you're like, I'm not going to strip it down. Uh, It makes me want to vomit. I went into this room in the corner, not even like, not even like out of like reasonable eyesight if you were cleaning, was a pair of dirty socks. I suspect they were dirty. I don't know. They were rolled up. I didn't really get too close to them. And you know when you land and it's like late and you just you just don't want to switch rooms. You just don't want to have somebody come up into your room. And so I left them there all weekend. The dirty socks. In fact, the mor- the first morning when I left, this hotel just wasn't clean. I don't want to say which one it was because the staff couldn't have been nicer. But I, I, I had food. I, I went out and got food the first night. And then I left it uh, not in the hall, but in the ice machine area, in the trash there. It was never emptied the entire three nights I was there. So I left for breakfast the first morning, right before the first day of the Teen Wolf Con. Epic Cons, had a great time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody who attended. And there was a woman in the hallway who was like, looked like the supervisor of the cleaning staff. She had a clipboard. Anytime somebody has a clipboard, I, that, I take you seriously. That's a sign of authority, the clipboard. And maybe some of the younger viewers don't even know what a clipboard is. And she was checking stuff off and she said, um, everything okay? And I said, well, actually, um, there's a pair of dirty socks in my room left from the previous person staying there. I, I don't like to be reminded that somebody else was ever in my room. I like to imagine that I'm the first person ever. And uh, she looked at me and she said, Oh, okay. And then just walked away. <laughs> so on the last day, I went downstairs and I had uh, breakfast three times and I went to just check, uh, you know, what do I owe? And uh, the guy was telling me and I said, hey, just so you know, this is how you negotiate. Hey, just so you know, uh, there's a pair of dirty socks. I don't want to tell anybody. And he goes, Really? He said, breakfast is on me. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you. And he said, uh, you know, I'm not supposed to say this, but I, I know who you are. I'm a big fan of your comedy. I love your stand-up. And I said, thank you. Thank you, sir. And that person handled it correctly. That's why I'm not naming the hotel I was staying at, but shame on you. I should write a letter. I should write a letter. Um... The Teen Wolf Con, let me talk about this. Well, let me first of all uh, thank everybody. I, I, I'm doing this podcast now. This is the only 45-minute or an hour-long period I have for the next four days to do it. Otherwise, this would bleed into next week. And I, I, I just, I met so many people this weekend that are fans of the podcast, and I'm getting so many emails that now, uh, and my Patreon users, I, I, uh, subscribers, I feel an obligation to you guys. So I'm doing it. I'm up early. I have to leave here in 45 minutes to get a haircut. I have appointments this afternoon. I have appointments tomorrow. I've got uh, th- my voiceover agents are back. I've got one of those due tomorrow. I don't know if I'm even going to have time. So this is the only time I can do it. And I wanted to do it because I appreciate you guys. Somebody just sent me. Let me thank this person. And I'm not saying this so you guys do this, but. This person just through Venmo, uh, Lisa, I won't say your middle name or last name, Lisa JJ sent me $111 for laughter. And I can't I can't thank you enough. So Lisa JJ, you know what I'm doing? Well, I'm either going to put that money into this podcast, or that's probably what I'll do, or my comedy special. So thank you for really supporting me. I, I appreciate that. I want to thank all the listeners the people who are going online and sharing it or rating it. You know, on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, you can write a review. I like when people write reviews if you like it. And for the people who are still sharing my comedy, you know, I'm putting up comedy clips of my More Than Loud special every day. In fact, I've got to find time to do that today because every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I seem to be putting up a clip. So thank you to everybody. And if you want to keep in touch, the email is what's wrong at orneyadams.com. Now, let me talk a little bit about a little bit about this Teen Wolf convention. Uh, flew in, uh, the, the worst first class I've ever stayed in. I, I, ever, I shouldn't even say I'm flying first class, but that, that's what the, the, all right. The convention flies you first class, 
okay? And it was one of those old janky planes. And uh, United's not even giving us water now, you know? Usually there's a bottle of water there. And, you know, I'll be honest, I fly coach all the time. If uh, You know, if I'm paying, I'm, I'm flying coach. So, I shouldn't say that, but... Uh, so, there's water. And uh, usually there's water... By the way, my mind is thinking a million things. So I start thinking, well, now, if the people hear that I'm willing to fly coach, they're not going to pay for me to fly coach. But uh, no, you're going to have to pay for me to f fly first class. Sorry. Okay. If I could just erase the last one minute, I would. Uh, I'm just so tired. What happens is, you know, I do these conventions and you have to be on from the second you leave the hotel room. Okay. So when I flew in, Okay, I'm on the plane. I suspect that another woman on the plane was an actress from another show at this convention. This wasn't just a Teen Wolf convention. There were other shows there. I don't like that. I don't like to share my convention with other shows. I like to be, I like it to just be a Teen Wolf universe. And then Coach can be Coach. Coach doesn't have to worry about uh, people not understanding his character. I can just be me. Although I heard uh, on the last day, what, some actor from another show actually had an absolute meltdown in the break room and went off on one of the employees. I missed it. But there was drama. And I love when there's drama that doesn't include me because it usually does. So uh, I, I'm flying in and, uh, you know, this is what makes Teen Wolf so unbelievable. There was, you know, another actor, actress on the plane from another show. But when we landed... Outside of the gate at Chicago O'Hare Airport, right outside the gate, not baggage claim, not outside the, the door you have to walk outside of uh, the uh, secure area, uh, right there at the gate were three young lads with pictures of Orny Adams doing stand-up and Orny Adams' coach for me to sign. I felt like a big, big macha, big deal. Felt like a big, big deal. And I sat there, I signed, they go, we sign another one? I go, I'll sit there and sign. I'll sign until everybody on that plane knows that they were on the plane with a big deal. Because I don't feel like a big deal in first class anymore. They don't even have water when we sit down. There's no water. I said to the flight attendant, I said, hey, could I get a little water? He said, uh, we'll be around with drinks right after takeoff. I go, uh, first class. They bought me a fur. They paid eighteen hundred dollars for this ticket. I I can't even request water. So I didn't like that. I didn't like that uh, that outbound flight. I did like signing the autographs. How did these kids know? How do they know what gate my plane? How do they know I'm on that plane? Who tipped them off? That's what that's what scares me. And on the way out too, same thing. Three other guys there. And I signed a bunch of autographs because I wanted everybody boarding that plane to know, big. you're sitting with a big deal. Want everybody to, uh, in fact, the guy sitting next to me uh, in first class, uh, he knew, he saw, he saw me sign. And he was, couldn't have been nicer. Couldn't have been nicer. Now, this is weird. Flying back on United, uh, amazing flight crew, great experience, gave us water before we took off. Could, can you imagine that? Now, I still don't understand why during the boarding process, the families get to board. Why do families with kids get to board before first class? Let the first class people in. And believe me, I'm not always first class, but I will fight for the first class people. Why, why do they get to board? The families, let the first class people get out of the, uh, get the anxiety of boarding out of their system. Let them get on, sit down, have a drink, and then let the kids on with the families. I'm fine. You can, of course, and then there's the disability section that that can go first, then first class, or military before, then first class, then families, and then all the other people. And again, on the flight outbound, they were letting the coach people put their luggage in the first class bins, and they were up there the whole flight, effing, screwing around with their luggage. So anyway, these are just ridiculous problems to have. I understand that. I got real problems. I, 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 you'll, you'll see. I got some real problems. Now, on this plane flying back, I flew backwards. Do you know what that is? My seat. United has these planes where their seats are facing the rear of the plane. So you take off. It's, like, it's weird. And you land. It's, it's weird. It's the opposite of what you normally feel. And if you look out the window while you're taxiing, you, you, you want to throw up. 
I thought I was going to throw up the whole flight. Actually, when you're in the air, it's fine. But I was so disoriented the whole time flying backwards. I, I, I got up to go to the back bathroom. I walked backwards. To the, and then I urinated backwards. I, I urinated into the sink. So uh, that is a joke, of course. Uh, but it is, it's a weird sensation. I've never done that before. They should tell you before you, when you book the ticket, hey, this is a, a rear-facing seat. So uh, I don't know. I didn't know. I looked, on the seat map, they didn't tell you. And the guy next to me said that too. In fact, we were both anxious about the whole flight, although I wanted to try it. I was thinking, should I ask somebody to switch? Like, I, I could stand up and go, whoa, this is, this is weird. I'm flying backwards. And then maybe somebody would volunteer and say, oh, I, I've always wanted to fly backwards. Well, good news for you, sir. Today's your lucky day. You're flying backwards now. So um, I did it. I don't want to ever do it again. And when we landed, the guy next to me said, what'd you think? I said, I have no idea what I just felt. I, I don't know what I what I feel, what I felt what I what I feel, uh, but uh, not for me. Okay, let's let's uh, chalk this up. Oh, Teen Wolf convention, yes. So you've got to be on the minute you leave the hotel room. That's what I was saying because there's people in the lobby waiting for you, and you're on. People come up to you. They want pictures or autographs or they got they want to tell you a story. I can't tell you the number of people that come up to me and say. You don't remember me? Like, I remember you. I mean, I, no offense. I meet, you know, a lot of people in a week. You don't remember me? And then it turns out to be a really st- stupid encounter. Like after, after sh- I said hi to you after a show. Oh, okay. Happened the other day. I was in uh, Toluca uh, Lake, Burbank. Walked by somebody and uh, they were like, Orny. They, they pretend like we're best friends. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. I said, I, I don't remember you. Oh, I met you after a show at the Improv. Oh, stupid me for not having a photographic memory of every person that ever came up to me. You know, I love when people come up to me and I love when you guys are kind and uh, don't ever stop, but don't expect me to remember you. I can't remember people I've dated in my past and I dated them. They were contacting my phone at one time. And I can't remember them. I suck with names. I suck with faces. You know? So, anyway, uh, you have to take about, you know, a thousand pictures over the course of the weekend. And when you're my age, the stress of taking a picture, well, ages you another year. You know, a single picture is so exhausting. Just thinking about how your face is going to look. And what are your eyes going to look like? And do you look tired? And don't don't blink like a kid blinking. Like when you were younger and you see a picture of like the, the group picture and one person's eyes were closed. You're like, oh, okay, look at that kid didn't time it right. And it's cute. Not cute when you get to be my age. No, then you go, oh, he's turned the corner. And I would say in every one of these pictures, I look like I turned the corner. You know what I mean? I don't know what's going on with my face, but it's uh, it's stressful getting my picture taken. And then they let people do selfies with you. They can pay, I'm not kidding, this is $50 to take a selfie with me. $50. I'm thinking, hey, just wait at the gate at the airport or come see one of my stand-up shows. You can see, come to my stand-up shows, selfies are free. Uh, in fact, I was selling my T-shirts. I made T-shirts for the convention that said, Vote Greenberg, Class President. I love them. They're one of my favorite t-shirts. I have a few left. They're on my website. So if you go to orneyadams.com slash store, you can buy a Greenberg for president t-shirt. You can also buy the brand new 2024 Lower Your Expectations University. It's now a university. And you can be part of it. You can get the merch there. In fact, one guy just bought 21 t-shirts last week. So thank you. Thank you all. Everybody's so supportive. I, I really, it's you guys. It's us. It's a group. You know, uh, the industry I don't like. Like if, if you watch that documentary, Quiet on the Set, about the kids on Nickelodeon, uh, I'll give you a little hint of why I don't like this industry that much. And not that that ever happened to me. 
There was uh, sexual abuse. There was misogyny. There was just general bad behavior on the set. This didn't happen to me. Uh, I've seen bad behavior. And I've, I've had a... Uh, someday maybe I'll tell the story. Uh, I could have somebody canceled. I could have somebody very powerful canceled. In fact, um, what happened to me... Hmm. I think I wouldn't be the one leading the canceling. But if people needed support, if, if people, uh, I'd be there. I'd tell my story. So, you know, when people say, well, why did it take so long for the person who was abused to come forward? I'm telling you, most people don't say anything. What happened to me could have been a bad situation, but I prevented it. But it was, a, it was bad what the person did. Tried to do. Tried to do. So, I'm so tired. Um, so, you take a million pictures and you do meet and greets. And, uh, in fact, in one of the meet and greets, uh, Rachel was there. Rachel is a longtime fan that comes to my shows in Chicago. And she comes to the convention. She's very supportive. She's a Patreon, full-on Patreon uh, member, which I appreciate. And in the last episode or two episodes before the Howie Mandel, people loved the Howie Mandel episode. Absolutely. And people are loving the clips of me on the Barry Katz podcast that are being posted all over social media. But uh, Rachel uh, wrote, in regards to dog crap, remember I talked about uh, my trash bins and people putting their dog crap in it. So I put a, a hand hand note that said, uh, you know, no dog shit, please. Handwritten with a red marker. It's fading. It's fading a lot after like just four weeks, which is making me think if I open the no dog crap, no, no dog shit, please store on Etsy, I've got to find a better way to make sure the ink doesn't fade. Hmm. Uh, Rachel wrote, on Reddit, they have, there have been many discussions about poop bag etiquette. I don't like the word poop. Although some people don't care and prefer that people toss it rather than leaving it on the ground, the overall, leave it on the ground. How about this? How about you retrieve your dog's shit and take it back to your place? The overall sentiment seems to be that you're making someone else deal with one of the biggest downsides of dog ownership. That's right. That's right. It's not my problem. Incidentally, my daughter got busted doing a dump and ditch on someone's ring cam and they posted it on Nextdoor. Thankfully, I didn't get lynched because no one knew it was me. I don't know if you can say the word lynched anymore. I did the right thing, though. Or maybe you can. Uh, and reached out to the homeowner, apologized, and traumatized my daughter by perp walking her down the street with a scrub brush and a soda bottle of soapy water. I expected rage when I messaged the homeowner, but she was extremely understanding and gracious. She thanked me. Um, she thanked me. She thanked me. What was the end of this? This is page five of five. Anyway, can you imagine the trauma that this Rachel's daughter is in for, daughter's in for the rest of her life? There's my Boston accent. Daughter. Uh, that her mom did that. But, you know, how do you teach these kids the right from wrong? Be responsible. Be, what is this? I'm looking. What is it? Oh, I got a zipper. I found a, zi found a zipper in my sweatshirt. Nice. Nice. Um. Yeah. So anyway, that's. Uh, <laughs> imagine your mom doing that to you, walking her down the street. But you know what? I wish Rachel lived in my neighborhood and perp walked everybody putting their shit bags in my trash can and or leaving it on the pavement. Pick up after your dog. It's not other people's responsibilities. That includes. Uh, uh, dining, outdoor dining in Los Angeles. Everybody brings their dog now and it's out of control. I love dogs, but you know, it's not, I don't enjoy uh, eggs and having my leg humped on the patio. Now, if a human was humping my leg, that's another story. <laughs> anyway, thanks for the uh, email, Rachel. Uh, if you want to email me, it's what's wrong at orneyadams.com. And all I ask is that you not be, uh, you know, be rational in your emails. A lot of a lot of nutty emails I get from people. Um, so anyway, do all that con. And then 
uh, um, it was about two 10-hour days at the convention in a row, being around a lot of people. I'm not used to being around that many people, signing autographs, meet and greets. What else do you do? Uh, pictures. Yeah, maybe it's not that hard. It's, it's not that hard, but for me, it's exhausting. I'm on the whole time. I notice other uh, actors, we discuss this. Uh, they, they can turn it on and off. I can't. The minute I leave that hotel, I'm at 100. It's a light switch. I think Tyler Posey commented on that. It was great to see the other cast members. We all went out for dinner two nights in a row. Uh, Saturday night, or I didn't Friday night, but Saturday night. Yeah, we all went, uh, let's see, it was Colton. Uh, who else was there? Shelly was there. Uh, both the Carver twins, which I'm working really hard to be able to tell them apart. Uh, Max, and then the other one, he's got a different name, Charlie. Um, who else was there? Yeah, there was just uh, there were other people there. And we had fun. It was great. Great time. And it feels nice to be included because what happened was, before I was, uh, and this is why I had to learn the difference between the Carvers. One of the Carvers, thinking it was Charlie, we made plans to meet for breakfast <laughs> in the morning in the hotel lobby at eight. And I just couldn't sleep. And, you know, when you saw the cast members, you'd be like, oh, uh, I guess I'll see you at breakfast. I just assumed like every other convention, everybody was going to be downstairs at around eight because the pickup was at 930 a.m. So I get there and the the hostess said, uh, just one. I said, well, for now, but uh, there's a bunch of us. So there's probably going to be, you know, a bunch of us at the table. And she goes, how many? I go, could be like, could be eight, could be more, probably more, but let's, let's just do for eight. So they pushed together three tables and they set it for eight people, waters and menus and I sit down, and now it's 8 o'clock, and people should start arriving. And it's 8.15, and I order, and uh, it's 8.30, and my food arrives. And the, Well, the first waiter said, Doug, do you want to order? Do you want to wait to see if your friend's come? And I don't know, I'll order. And uh, 8.45. And, uh, so what happened was, nobody showed up. <laughs> I sat there. <laughs> I looked like the biggest loser. It felt like high school again, waiting I felt like I was at the mall waiting for everybody to show up and nobody showed up. I sat there. Shame on you, Carvers. And that, meanwhile, I was texting Max going, hey, buddy, I'm downstairs. Breakfast, sending pictures. And it turns out I never, I didn't talk to Max the night before I talked to Charlie. And, uh, shouldn't they be t telecommunicating these twins? They look the exact same to me for the most part. Shouldn't they be mentally, uh, mental telepathy going on? Shouldn't, even if I text Max, Max should mentally telepathy uh, send to uh, Charlie, hey, get downstairs for breakfast. Anyway, so the breakfast ends and, uh, you know, they just, uh, <laughs> just like, I go, I guess nobody else is showing up. I took up six spots. Now I've got to over tip to compensate for all my stupid Teen Wolf cast members that stood me up, made me look like a loser. But, the cast is so loving and supportive because I did a stand-up show on Sunday night. And this is what I'm saying. I don't know how. My eyes were bloodshot. I felt like I was going to throw up. I didn't know when to eat. I had no energy left. I flew in on Friday night, got in late, met the cast at the bar, hung out, didn't have a drink, woke up early, got stood up for breakfast, spent... Uh, 10 hours Saturday at the Team Wolf convention. Saturday night, I went out to dinner. I was social because I thought, these people are very social, and yet they still wake up and look good on camera. Why can't Orny Adams enjoy life? Well, I'll tell you why. Enjoying life is for other people, apparently. So I went out to eat. I got home at 11. I forced myself to sleep. I got up early. I had breakfast alone again. This time, the uh, hotel wouldn't give me a table. For sex, they sat me alone in the corner, the loser corner. I was on the buddy bench table and I ate and then I had an even longer day because I had to, uh, uh, I had a stand-up show and the convention ended at about 6 p.m. and now I had two hours and so I got some food 
and I rested, I looked at my notes, and I was stretching, I was doing everything. I said, I don't know how this is gonna go. And it's not a great, like w w the convention was at the Navy Pier in Chicago, and it was a huge open space. And not great for comedy, because comedy needs to be contained. In fact, the panels were very difficult because the sound just went up or went all over or bounced here. And then to our left was where the convention was. So you could overhear some of the convention going on. And the chairs are too far from the stage. So I had to move all the chairs forward. And attendance was really good. And we had some VIP people and they got some VIP gifts. And you're not going to believe this. From six to eight, three Teen Wolf cast members stayed to watch my show. Do you want to guess who they were? Do you want to guess who stayed to watch Orny Adams do stand-up? And this, this, to me, makes up for me being the loser at breakfast I had no friends. Seth Gilliam, Kylan Rambo, and Tyler Posey and his new wife stayed for the entire time. And Seth was laughing so hard and Seth loves comedy. He's friends with comedians. He told me which ones. And he lives in New York. And he goes to the Comedy Cellar, one of the greatest clubs of all time. Maybe there's no question the greatest club of all time. On McDougal Street in New York City. And they and Seth gave me a standing ovation. I mean, I thought it was really cute. Like uh, Posey and, uh, and Kylan... And, it, and Posey's wife sat in the back and they ordered pizza and they had a picnic and the fans couldn't be nicer. I would love if 50% of my audience looked like Teen Wolf fans, looked like the people that were at this convention. They brought their parents. There were some older people. There's some people that just bought tickets because you, you didn't have to attend the convention. It was cool. Uh, my friend who's in the band, The Fold, was there. You know, he did the theme. I should play the fold theme when I get out of here on his behalf. He was there and it was an amazing show. And what I'm saying is I do not know. I do not know where I got the adrenaline, the energy to get through this. But I will say this, and I've talked about this for years. I call it an adrenaline dump. All my adrenaline is dumped. And by the end of the weekend, I have nothing. I went to this after party on Sunday. Uh, this guy named Jimmy threw an after party. I went for a little bit. And then I went back and slept. I got on the plane, flew backwards, got back to Los Angeles yesterday. And I couldn't move. No, it wasn't yesterday. I got back on Monday. Yeah, and then yesterday I went to the gym. I uh, My days are just all, everything's turned around. But it takes almost a full day of lying there like a vegetable. And this is me. I get sick every time I go out on the road and do shows because I put so much out there. And even now, you can hear the dump trucks. I should just be chilling and doing nothing, but I'm rushing to do this podcast and then I'll have to edit it and I'll put it up on my Patreon. I mean, I'm already, I'm getting anxious. I've got to get to uh, my, uh, my hair c cutter, my bar. Those trucks are, imagine working in a truck like that. I complain about... Uh, my life and my job. Although driving it, maybe there's something zen about it. You know, trash truck. They don't have to get out anymore. It's just it's, they take an arm and like a robot. Put the trash right in the back of the truck. The old days used to get out and smell it. and It'd be like trash juice all over you. Nasty. Nasty. But thank you to everybody that came to the convention. Especially the people that came to my stand-up show. And I'm wondering if I do these international conventions, if I can do stand-up, because I love it. But the show should have been on Saturday night. Too many people left Sunday right after the convention and had flights or were driving home. Uh, so, anyway, I, I want to read another email. Remember, the email is what's wrong at orneyadams.com. Uh, this one is from Janine. Hey, Orny, just finished episode 105. Now, for reference, this is 107. Loved it. I really admired how hard and long you fought for the stove issue to be resolved. 
I don't think I have it in me to keep going like you did, especially with all those transfers, et cetera, meaning uh, transfer on the phone to different people within my insurance company. You had a new, uh, we had a new concrete driveway. Long story. Is it a long driveway? But it was done wrong, poorly, many issues. Since it was an independently owned company and we were dealing with the owner uh, and he has since retired, changed company name multiple times, and now using his son's name as the owner, I ran out of steam and ideas and how to fight them. Tried the BBB, Better Business Bureau, filed the claim but never got anywhere because he never responded to them and they cannot do anything uh, uh, um, anything else other than give them a poor rating on BBB for not responding. Those people don't care about BBB. In fact, the first stove... Re- people have one and a half stars they don't care about yelp they don't care about reviews it's like a scam other than getting a lawyer and trying to recoup the money which would cost money that's true there was nothing else we could do however episode 105 did make me fire it up and gave me incentive to try harder in the next time i have any type of issue you, you, you gotta fight if everybody fights the people like the big lighter people then they'll conform and change their behavior i would hope Make their life tough like they make your life tough. And I know I will because that seems to be the way uh, of the world nowadays. Um, thanks for keeping up the fight uh, and make life fair for all, make life more fair for all of us. Okay, then I, I wrote to her. I said, hey, listen, can I share this on my podcast? Because everybody's fighting something and maybe I can help you fight. Maybe, maybe I can guide you a little bit. So I... I Give her some suggestions. She said, uh, and I said, what did, what did you pay? She said, the driveway cost was $4,800. Uh, we are in Illinois. We found the company online, called several companies for bids. Some never called back. Imagine that. Now, you call Orny Adams. You say, hey, I want to hire you for a stand-up show. You're going to get a response, even if it's not the right uh, deal for me. Another one came out, took pics, and said they'd email a bid. Never heard from them again. Now, that's weird, right? This guy came right out and was very nice, and he had the, the winning bid uh, in writing the next day. We got one other bid for a comparable cost, but the company couldn't get us in as quickly. So we went with, he's they're calling it Blake's company. What went wrong? Workers showed up uh, two and a half hours late, of course. And I'm sure there's a time issue with laying concrete and needing it to dry. Uh, and you're also sitting there anxious, like, come on, I, I put aside this time. I, I, I'm ready to let you in, and then I'm going to Costco to go shopping. Uh, and they got no call. And it sounds like uh, we related to your stove story in that regards. We called Blake, and he said uh, they got a late start and were on their way. Three guys came, all of them very young, later found out they were his son and nephews. They did not do full, continual driveway pour as promised. So I guess it looks like it's sectioned, and you don't want that. Uh, they did it in four sections, which caused cracks. In fact, they sent a picture. I'll put the picture up. Uh, it, there's no way this is a, a newly laid concrete driveway. You should see the concrete around my place. It looks smooth like a baby's ass. They didn't use the concrete support underneath. Okay, I don't know the technical stuff. Uh, Blake showed up later with his grandkids and dog. Oh, did the uh, did the dog hump anybody's leg? Did the dog shit on the new concrete and then they put the bag in your trash can that had just been picked up by trash? Like, you say, like a minute ago, we just heard the trash trucks so are now I'm anxious that they've taken my trash cans and there's somebody out there putting their dog crap in it. But I got a three camera shoot on them. I got three cameras. I'll bust them. And then I'll, I'll call Rachel, Chicago, I'll fly her out and she'll perp walk the people. You know what I want you to do, Rachel? I want you to take the owner's face and sh- and shove it right down. Make them smell that the, the uh, dog crap. Like uh, they used to do that to dogs. They used to make them smell that. Like if they uh, went to the bathroom inside, they make them smell it. I don't know what that does, but I never owned a dog. But I love dogs. Uh, uh, the dog stepped on the wet driveway. Okay, the dog did do something. The dog stepped on the wet driveway, causing marks still there today. Well, you know what? We can forensically... Do some, uh, you know, like fingerprint dog paw analysis on that. Uh, they did not come back and seal it the next day. Lots of back and forth. Blake came back to inspect the uh, and address our concerns days after putting us off because he was in the ER with COVID. That's the other thing. Con artists always have excuses. They're always sick. Somebody in their family always died. And uh, if you work with the same people long enough, they'll recycle excuses. My accountant 
had a contractor that didn't show up uh, one time because his brother died. And then a year later, didn't show up again because his brother died. And he said, oh, how many brothers do you have? He said, one. So uh, by a mathematical uh, uh, equation, you know, that person's a liar. Um, told us we were too picky and it was a, it was best we find someone else to seal it. Drop the sealant off on the porch and we never saw him again. Well, he said, drop that off. That's, but that's strange. He answered one final call from my husband and, and cussed him out again for being too picky. Uh, I don't think you're being p- too picky. You want your job. You drive it. look like a, uh, a, a smooth baby's ass. He answered one final call. The entire experience was over a year ago, but still upsets, upsets, upsets us every time we look at the driveway. Imagine you, get, you go in and out. You feel defeated. You feel taken advantage of, and you feel like you lost a battle. That sucks. There are actual holes in the driveway. Again, I'll put up the picture so you can see. And uh, holes in the driveway all the way through. And we'll have to pay to have it torn out and redone. Wow. Wow. So there you go. It's when you own a home, I'm telling you, it's really difficult because something breaks all the time. You can't like the other thing is you have to worry like, is this guy Blake? quote unquote plate the Blake. I don't know if that's that's his name or not. Is he gonna come back? Is he gonna do something to you? Like they know where you live, but you know nothing about them. And that's what's scary about letting people into your house. And that's why you see you, you ever go to someone's house and it's just falling apart. It's not because they don't care. It's not because they don't have the money. It's because it's just too difficult. It's just too difficult to find people that you can rely on. My my roof needs to be sealed. I had a guy who came out, did half the job and didn't finish it. There was no problem. I paid the guy exactly what he wanted, wanted to be paid. So why didn't he come back? You don't know. You don't know. So what do you do in those situations? It's really tough. But you know, I'll tell you this much, when they don't show up and they're two and a half hours late, right there, you know, something's not right. Like when I flew uh, United the out to Chicago, you knew right away that this was not going to be a, an enjoyable experience based on the fact that the guy didn't want to get me water. That's all I needed to see. Now, coming back, the minute you got on, they couldn't have been nicer. In fact, one of the ladies said to me, hey, if you get sick in the sink, you just sniff this. And she gave me a hand sanitizer that just smelled like alcohol. So now United wants me to do some huffing in first class if I start to feel sick. Yeah, so it's... Um Listen, we're all fighting battles, but I encourage everybody, and I'm not kidding, I encourage you to fight, to fight these people, even just a little bit, even calling them over and over again, or writing review so the other people get to see it. Um, that that really, I'm trying to find, uh, oh, I got the full theme right here, okay. Uh, George Cassidy, that was uh, who came to see the show. Uh, anyway, anyway. So let's chalk this up under uh, good things that people do. I was hiking in Los Angeles. Somebody must have lost their keys. Look at this. Look at this picture. Somebody built a key-holding monument. They actually built with stones and sticks, and they put it up. Uh, and so it makes me, it just reminds me, there are some good people out there. And it also the spectrum of, of humans, there are just complete a-holes and then wonderful people we have the capability we have the capability of being an amazing species that could be supportive we'd have all diseases cured there wouldn't be hunger there wouldn't be poverty if we all work together like this somebody took time out of their day to build this monument get the proper sticks and hang the keys there for the person that lost it that's doing a lot for somebody else and not asking for anything. I'll tell you something. If I built this thing, I put my Venmo code underneath it. I want to thank you. I want a recognition. That's why when I tip you at a restaurant, I want you to come back because I'm a pretty big tipper. I want to hear, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Here's my question for you. Would you tip? I always tip the cleaning people in hotels. Would you leave a tip? For these cleaning people, if you found dirty socks in the corner of your room. Now, it's hard because you don't know if the person that's cleaning your room was the person that cleaned the room before and didn't notice the socks. That's that's where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, I've got to go to Beverly Hills. 
Oh, sure, I shouldn't say that. But I've got to go get my hair cut. Boy, I found, I, I just sounded bougie, didn't I? I just sounded bougie. Anyway, I've got to go get my hair cut. And uh, I've got a busy couple of days. And then in April, which is next month, I, I will be, I'm going to do a more relaxed schedule. I'm not going to do as many shows around town in Los Angeles. I'm not working the road. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to take time for myself. I'll be doing the podcast, but I can't stress the way I've been stressing. That's in April. That's why I'm doing this now. I'm stressing now. Uh, But I'm going to take some time for myself. I may even uh, go away, go sit in the cabin, get away from my phone. I need to digitally um, declutter my brain. I want to get back to, I love watching old movies. I watched Indiana Jones on the plane and there's no phones. I watched Boogie Nights, no phones, no cell phones. I really wish we could go back to that. I really do. In fact, the Teen Wolf convention, those kids are on their phone nonstop and they videotape everything. We made an announcement before my stand-up show, no pictures, no videotaping. And everybody had their phone down. And it was, I saw one person to my left. I wanted to say something, but, you know, I'm just so sick of it. Even like every time I fly, every time I fly, I just try and find a place away from everybody. And I know you guys think I'm bougie because I go to Beverly Hills to get my hair cut. But listen to this. I don't go to the lounge in the airports. That's right. I sit with you people. I sit with you common average, unfamous people. I actually enjoy it. I like people watching. But every time I find a place, I always find a gate where there's no plane coming or going and it's empty and quiet and I sit there and there's no one around me. And every single time, without exception, somebody on the phone will come sit close to me and have a yelling conversation because people don't know how to speak with a normal volume. And I sit there and I'm like, I, I go, are you kidding me? That's what I do. You got to be kidding me. And they're not even aware enough that they're bothering me or even hearing me saying that. This is such a stupid world. I hate this species. I want more people, more humans to be like the person that did this, that put up this key monument. Those are the people I want in the world. That's who I want to share the planet with. Everybody else, go to Mars. Go to Mars. Get off my planet. Sick of bad people. Really am. Now, before I bring this home and I play the theme by the fold, I want to thank you, the listeners. I want to thank you, everybody, for the kindness, the people that are writing really nice things under my videos and just emailing me. What's wrong at orneyadams.com? What's wrong at orneyadams.com? If you want to see where I'm playing, again, April, taking some time off, but May 4th, Fourth, I believe it's a Saturday. I'll be at the Kookaburra Lounge. Kookaburra Lounge here in Los Angeles uh, doing a show. Part of the Netflix is a joke festival. And then I'm off to Halifax Comedy Festival in Halifax, Canada. Then I'm jumping on a plane, Porter Airlines, whatever that is. And I'm going to, uh, I think it's Ottawa, isn't it? No, the, the, the um, Yuck Yucks Ottawa. Anyway, it's on orneyadams.com slash tour and i was on uh and thank you ernesto Rotato, for mastering the audio here but i was on i was uh at the airport and i was on the adam corolla podcast in fact where was that somebody wrote me a nice I, I didn't bring it in of course somebody wrote a nice email to me and they said listen i love every time you're on the adam corolla podcast and the last time i was on somehow we started a discussion about uh the use of tennis balls. Are tennis balls used more on a tennis court for playing tennis or in other ways, like, you know, walkers. You all see them on the bottom of walkers. And what they do is the old people take a knife and they they slit, hopefully, the tennis ball and not themselves. It's very dangerous. But tennis balls are used. People have them when they come into their driveway so they don't they know where to stop when the tennis ball hits the windshield. I prefer ping pong ball. Some people do tennis balls. But you see tennis balls in different places. This is a new one. Now look at this. I was at the Chicago airport, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking. I said, is that a tennis ball on a stick? And this guy, this guy 
one of the cleaning people was spraying the ground and for like smudges caused by like suitcases, he was using the tennis ball, you see it if you look at the video, on a stick. And that, the tennis ball was cleaning the ground. Just look at whatever I did. It looked like I was churning butter. And I went up to him and asked, you know, I wanted to find out, like, I wanted to do some investigating because I had time. Because my flight was delayed uh, two and a half hours. Every week now, flights are delayed, by the way. Every single week. My flight to Las Vegas <clears throat> the weekend before was delayed three and a half hours. I could have driven. Could have driven, it would have been faster. And now coming out of uh, Chicago, we were delayed uh, like two hours, two and a half hours. And the thing is, and there's always, it's always delayed. Then you get on the plane. Then they announce there's another mechanical situation that they, they have to take care of. And then they, then they always say, well, the mechanical thing is fixed. We're just waiting for the paperwork. It's the same shit over. How about this? Do the paperwork in the air and then electronically send it back. These planes do not spend enough time on the ground and are not maintained enough. Also, there are they should just be on the ground for five hours with people walking through them, cleaning them, really cleaning them, and really like, look at the seats. Are the seats okay? And look at uh, inside the, the cockpit. How is everything? These planes are overused. I don't know how it is allowed. The schedule's in the skies. It's, it's, it's too busy. There's too many planes coming close to each other in the air, on the ground. It's just, it's scary. It's its a pot waiting to boil over. And don't watch that pot, because a watch pot never boils. Boy, remember those days when you had so much free time? The, the, you, you, you were, there was so little to do, you'd watch a pot boil? Then we invented the iPhone, and now you sit there on your iPhone on TikTok watching people dance while the pot boils. So I went up to the guy and said, hey, you know, I wanted to do some investigating to find out if this was a standard issue or a tennis ball on a stick or something that he came up with, and he didn't speak a word of English. So then I walked around the airport, and I found another. Now I found a woman using the same thing. So Chicago O'Hare Airport is issuing tennis balls on sticks to clean the floor. That's the breaking news from the What's Wrong with Orny Adams podcast. Now, play the theme. There it is. Boy, I wore the headsets the whole time, did I? Wow. Just another rainy day in Chicago. There you go. Fire it up. For my funny I got to be honest with you. I really wish I wasn't wearing the headsets the whole time. But what are you going to do? He's got great big eyes. This, this, this is a real band, everybody. What's his name, Dan? Dan's his brother. George and Dan, they did the theme for the Legos movie. We got Orny Adams. God, oh. Shame on you, Bic Lighters. Shame on you, corporations, for wasting money. Shame on you for corporations like Boeing for not building better planes. My advice to everybody, stay safe. Treat others like you'd want to be treated. Good luck with that. And guess what, Bic? I'm not sending back the lighters. Look at this. Where is it? Look at this. Look at this. Uh, look at this. You've got to be kidding me. This waste to send back a 50 cent lighter. What a waste. And that's the cost of them 50 cents. Never forget Bic spent more on shipping. Than on the than what I paid for those lighters. That's a good business plan. We should all invest in Bix, Bic lighters. Anyway, thank you so much. We'll see you again next week on What's Wrong with Orny Adams. And there was a lot wrong this time. A lot.